Thack from Thack Ironworks. Welcome to this video. What are we doing in the Hobbit hole, you might ask? Well, I'm glad that you did. What we're doing is building the headboard for my bed. Okay, let me explain. So, uh, recently I got some uh, redwood cedar from British Columbia. Got that in, and then I took uh, these planks to my carpenter friend and he laminated them together and I gave him a template so he laminated them and created this shape here okay so we cut out this shape Viking ship-esque um, shades of that and then I had them um, use their router and put grooves in here this gave me my blank, my starting point, and then from there, I have done one. Okay, so this is just freshly finished. Um, so you can see I've carved some knot work into there. I've got a little screaming face that may or may not be um, visible in this lighting here, and then finished this off. So um, just did this one to get the idea for what I'm gonna do for this post here. So. Um, if you give me a second here, I'm going to slide this one into position. You'll be able to see it in situ. Okay, so there it is. It looks very wonderful. I'm quite pleased with that. So if you can imagine me carving out this one, doing the same thing, getting all my spikes and everything in there. And then I'm going to be building a headboard, which is... So this is a design that I've come up with. Um, again, I reached out to Victoria in Ukraine who's a designer and you may remember her from the door. Eric, can you just pan over to the door here? She designed the hinges for the inner door here um, in the Art Nouveau tradition. So I reached out to her and she came back. Um, we collaborated on getting the design together. She came back with something and then from there I've actually modified it slightly as I'm getting my uh, post done and, and trying to work the whole thing together. So this, you can see it, it would be roughly in this position here um, and then attaching into the wood. So I'm just kind of working at it piece by piece and letting it flow together. Um, so I've got my B emblem, which will be um, in the rapus, um, in brass. That will be the center point there. And then there's some flowers and some foliage stripe elements. Uh, Art Nouveau type whiplash things to try to pull that whole flavor together. I'm trying to go for a Viking fusion Art Nouveau sort of look a la fact. So let's see how this all comes together. Um, so now I've got all my designs basically in place and I've got to start working on this. So um, in the upcoming video, we will do a little bit of me carving. This is something that I do in the evenings at my kitchen island. Um, I think I've got about a hundred hours to get this one carved, so a little bit of a daunting task. So it's going to take me a number of months to actually achieve that. In the meantime, I should be able to get onto the iron work and the brass work to create the other pieces. And eventually this will all come together and I will have a pretty bitching headboard if I don't say so myself. So let's begin. All right, here we are in my kitchen. This is where my wood carving takes place in the evenings. Just want to demonstrate the basic process of what I'm doing. Uh, I just got this cool little uh, gadget here, which is a rotary tool. And I use that for outlining my pieces. So I've got it carved out in pencil. And then basically I go around with this and outline everything with that. Once I've got that done, 
I come in with a chisel and deepen those areas down to about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit deeper. And then using the bigger chisel, I rough out material, remove the big chunks. And when I get into tighter areas, I go to my smaller chisel here. And that one I can actually do just with the heel of my hand. I'm not actually um, using a hammer for that one. Anyway, I rough it out. I get this all out and you can see it's quite rough. And then after I get everything roughed out, um, I, then I go in with this chisel and start really refining these areas, cleaning up the edges. Once that is done, then I actually go in with my really expensive box cutter and um, do some cutting with that or just some trimming take the edges down, I put a bevel on there, and then also I create the different levels here. So I got my overlaps for the, um, the knot work. So what I'll do is do a slice on either side there, and then I'll actually just slice away a little bit of material and get that 3D effect there of the overlap. And it is time consuming. So on and so on. Now, let me just flip it over because I've got more progress on the other side there. So you can see once I've got it all, where I've removed the background, the ground, um, taken that back there, cleaned everything up. I chamfered my edges. I've got my difference in um, the 3D there, and I've still got a little bit of work to do here, but you get the idea of where it's going. Um, and then it goes all the way down to the headpiece, which gets quite intricate in there. I find I actually have to use um, my rotary tool, and I get in with some really fine um, little bir birds or bits there, some really fine ones that get in and do the detail work. So I always treat this part as almost a separate thing because the carving is so intricate in comparison to the rest of it. Now, this is not really my wheelhouse. I'm not a professional wood carver, but I seem to be muddling my way through. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And uh, let's just see how it progresses. Back out for now. See ya. All right, much time has elapsed and I've been doing quite a bit of carving on the evenings. Missing a lot of days because my life is uh, interesting, so to speak. So I've gotten this far and I'm coming up to my feature for this one. Uh, the first one I did a screaming woman face. I was trying to go with an Art Nouveau um, where they often use lots of female faces, but I decided to mix it up on my other um, faces just to, just because, why not? So anyway, I've been doing a lot of wolf type stuff and I've been very inspired on that. Um, and looking at images, I saw the Witcher Wolf. And um, I gotta say, man, that's a really cool image. Um, and I really like that dynamic energy that, that that's got there. So I thought, I think I'm gonna incorporate that into it. You know, I'm ripping off a design there, but um, I'll modify it. So what I did is take took that. I'm not sure how well you're able to make this out on the camera, um, but basically I made that wolf motif into um, some knot work, almost like a wicker um, type head. And so now I've got that penciled out here. I've got my spine of um, knot work coming up to it and into it now. So what I'm gonna do is start working on this. And I think we'll just do a little bit of a progression this evening over the next couple hours till I run out of steam. Um, but we'll do the occasional shot. So the way I'm gonna start with this, I'm just gonna take a sharp knife and I basically just outline by carving in and down slightly in that. Once I've got everything outlined, then I can start chipping away. Um, and that's the way I found it tends to work best for me. Um, I've got my tool here, which is a rotary tool, which is not plugged in. So I can use this, but I just find with doing the outlining, I'm, I'm, I'm actually more precise with the knife 
um, and I find I can come in with this after to do some of the um, carving with it but for starting out to get a nice crisp line I like to do it old school with a knife so here we go Okay, so 30 minutes later, I have now outlined everything using my trusty knife. Made this knife in uh, a knife course I had while I was teaching this weekend um, and thought I would use it. It was actually pretty sharp. I ended up cutting my uh, FU finger. So that step is done. Now what I'm going to do is come in with my little chisel here and start just peeling back towards my line and lowering the ground I guess I would call this just being careful not to um, lift up any of these areas get underneath this I find that cedar is a pretty splintery wood I don't know in the carving world if it is an optimum wood for carving I find that it's a little bit delicate but it's nice and soft Okay, so at the end of my roughing out the ground, just got a little bit here left to do, and then that is one pass. Um, I found now what I need to do is basically go back and start over, and I need to sharpen all my lines and then go in very carefully and remove more. Um, I wanna bring this down to about a quarter inch. I don't know if you can see camera-wise, I've got this down about a quarter inch from the, um, surface level there so I need to bring all this down that, that gives me enough um, depth and shadow I feel um, so that's a long way off but I think what we'll do is just jump ahead right now to the next phase of operations in this and that is um, creating the different levels in the knot work so um, for example what I do is just slice here. It's using my fancy box cutter. And then basically just shaving a little ramp, if you will, down to change the height. give that change in depth so you get that overlapping effect then so I'll do that on the other side and now I'm gonna have to do it right away the opposite way so there's a, a change in height pretty rapid once I've got that I'll often come in with my little rifler files there by the way, the cameraman has birds on his shoulder. That's what uh, the background music is. It's Marley. Marley hates me, actually. This is gonna go badly. Ow! <laughs> back, back. Never. That was bad. Okay, anyway. So with my rifler file then I can just kind of sand that transition, make it nice 
and smooth, less abrupt. Um, and then the pieces just kind of flow over top of each other. Eric, if you'll just back up here, you can see what the final result on that is. And once we get that stained, everything pops out really good. I, I tend to highlight this a little bit lighter sanded and keep the, the ground a little bit darker. So it makes for a nice dramatic effect. That's it. Um, so I've got, this took me uh, a little over an hour, hour and a half maybe to get to this point probably another two to three hours to really actually finish it off. There's quite a bit of detail work now. Um, basically just got it roughed at this point. Collaboration today with Amy. So I am building a headboard for the bed in my Hobbit hole. In designing it, I actually reached out to my friend in Ukraine, Victoria, um, who did some work on my door. She designed the interior door of the Hobbit Hole with the Art Nouveau style and I liked her work and she was um, asking if I had anything that she wanted me to design. I thought, you know what? I kind of have in mind what I wanted to do with it, but I'm going to throw it at her. She came back with the design, which was pretty interesting. And Eric will actually load that on from somewhere else. It'd be much better. Anyway, I then transposed that to a piece of wood hardboard and brought it up to real size. Essentially a three foot circle and um, it's going to have some iron work and then in the center some repousse, um, a brass B, which is kind of a, a departure for me. And in working with Amy recently a few months back I, I got thinking hey I kind of like the style of her work um, and she's got a certain whimsy and elegance to her stuff that, that is lacking in the, the fact spectrum. When I try to make stuff, I have different ideas and different styles I try to do, and it always comes out the filter very fackish. So I thought it might be cool to mix it up a bit and uh, approach her with the idea, and she was agreeable to it. So without further ado, let's get into the B. Um, she's going to be making this out of brass and I'm going to be, while she's doing that, in the background I will be forging out some scrolls, doing some easy stuff, just kind of laying this out. So let's begin. Alright, cool. So uh, Rob gave me an idea of the general composition he wanted for the bee slash wasp and I took elements of both bees and wasps and combined them together into something that I thought sort of looked cool. Embellishing the original drawing, this ended up being uh, what I came up with and then off to the other side, you can see a maquette just out of plasticine, nothing um, fancy, just to sort of work out some of the levels and spots that could end up being tricky. But again, not committed to either of these, but good to know the direction that we're heading in. Okay, so I got this guy cut out so that I have an outline using my giant back scissors. Um, so if this is the front of the piece, we have to work from the back side first, which means that my image is flipped over and then traced. All right, so we're gonna use a series of hammers. I'm gonna start with the area um, that has the most depth or that I want to have the most depth, um, which I think is the thorax, which is the middle of this bee wasp here. And then I'll move on to the abdomen down here. That's what I'm seeing when I look at my maquette, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've spent a little time and I've got three of my scrolls um, roughed out. Um, now I just need to make eight more of each of these guys. Also, I have this one here, which has a whiplash on, which the whiplash is proving to be very complex shape. There's a real change in direction uh, very quickly in a small area, um, tricky to do. So I wanna start forging out that particular piece and then uh, it's going to be a rinse and repeat for a very long time to get all these pieces. So let's get to it.
damn it! Oh. Sorry, I'm happy to have your board. You're doing well. Anyway, so we're deep into the whole process now. Um, and I've been forging away for several hours, and Amy has been pounding out the bee for several hours, and we are into the thick of it now. Now it stretches out the time, and we've got many, many hours ahead. So I think what we're gonna do is cut things short on this video, but this is gonna be a fairly comprehensive one, and we've got uh, the uh, wood carving in it, and the rapus, and the uh, forge work, so a lot going on here. So we're just gonna split this one right down the middle. We're halfway. And uh, we're gonna say sayonara and see you later and all that stuff. Amy, come on on here yeah, and say yeah. goodbye. So, bye. Later. See ya!